Hey, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, how's it going? Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. And welcome back to another Sci Friday here with Bigger Mac and Carrie. Yeah, <laughs> I had to wait for that. Anyway, what's in the box? What's this in the is, box? This is a subscription called Matter from the Stem Cell um, Science Shop. And it's so fun. This one's actually heavier than uh, some of the other ones we've had. So oh, let's see what's inside. <gasps> I'm excited. Woo! Oh my oh, goodness. Looks like oh. we've got some vertebrae. Oh, that was okay. So they did have the plesiosaur fossils, but they were quite expensive and they sold out really quickly. So I didn't have a chance to get one, but they were pretty cool. All right. <laughs> So it looks like more tissue paper. Yay! We play with tissue paper. I wonder if this will be Scientologically, um, you know. Oh. Uh, anyway, enough jokes. Here's okay. the three cards. So we have a trilobite pyrite and a space shuttle blueprint. Wow, that's really cool. So Sean's gonna get those, or Bigger Mac is gonna get those out. Sean, it's all right. <laughs> Bigger Mac. And, and I'm going to explain what the space shuttle blueprint is. Okay. So it says this section of paper was a piece of blueprint used to manufacture a critical component of the space shuttle Columbia. Wow. In 1972, NASA hired LTV Aerospace to develop the shuttle entry air data system, a method for measuring air pressure distribution around the spacecraft's nose during re-entry. Due to the extreme heat of re-entry, which could reach temperatures as high as 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit or 1,480 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure how much Kelvin that is. This assembly <laughs> and the leading edges of the wings were protected by black tiles made of reinforced carbon, uh, sorry, carbon-carbon material. Okay, it says RCC in the brackets. So in 2003, during Columbia's 28th launch, a piece of foam broke off of the external fuel tank and struck the RCC tiles at about 500 miles per hour or 800 kilometers an hour, causing damage that ultimately led to the tragic destruction of the spacecraft during re-entry. Less than a year later, the space shuttle fleet was scheduled to be retired. Oh, wow. So that's a piece of the blueprint right um, of the, yeah. Right there, neat. Of the Space Shuttle Columbia. So I guess this is the full um, piece. So we just have a little little piece of that. Nice. That's pretty cool. All right. Um, next we've got, yeah, mini trilobites. So um, trilobites were among the most prolific life forms in Earth's history. The class of extinct marine arthropo arthropods Lived on Earth for over 270 million years, from the early Cambrian to the end of the Permian period. Um, they were characterized by their distinctive three-lobed body shape, which likely evolved as a means of increasing mobility and flexibility. There were 25,000 known species of trilobites, ranging in size from just a few millimeters to over 70 centimeters in length. This specimen is from the genus Acast Acastoids, which was among the smallest known trilobites. This fossil is from the Devonian period, which lasted from approximately 419 to 359 million years ago. It's incredible. This was a time of great changes in evolution with the emergence of many new species and the development of complex ecosystems. The Devonian is sometimes referred to as the age of fishes as it saw the evolution and diversification of many new marine species. Wow, those are really cool. <laughs> and the last is pyrite. Uh, I'm sure some of you know it's also known as fool's gold. Um, it's mineral composed of iron and sulfur, sometimes recognizable by its unique cubic crystal structure. It has a bright metallic luster and a pale brass yellow color that often resembles gold. It's commonly found in sedimentary rocks, hydrothermal veins, and coal. Uh, it has a hardness uh, rating of 6 to 6.5 on the Mohs scale and leaves a greenish black streak on streak plates. It can conduct electricity and has been used for cathode in lithium batteries. In its pure form, pyrite can be used as a natural semiconducting material with a band gap of 0 0.95 EV. As if that wasn't enough, pyrite also has the unique ability to convert heat into electrical energy. 
This thermoelectric property is an area of ongoing research since it allows pyrite to be used in solar cells. So that is really, really cool. Oh yeah, look how bright it is. Even like the picture doesn't do it justice. It's so pretty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so thanks for watching another week of Sci Friday. Yeah, there's the pyrite. And, and you can see uh, that cube, the cubic structures or whatever they were talking about. Absolutely. Oh, so cool. Really cool. Anyway, and uh, we hope you guys have had a great week. Don't forget to like it and thumbs up. And we'll be back with another episode of Sci Friday here on the Bigger Max channel. Oh, yeah. And what do we say at the end of that? Hit the music. Oh.